what is going on? How is everyone doing? Hope everyone is doing well. It's been a little while since we've been together. I've had a pretty busy week. Got some flies around me suddenly, but I'm trying something new. Now I can type without shaking the camera so much. So hope this is better. Black flies around here though. Fix this camera here. Should be good. Should be good. Luke is here. Sunshine is here. Armenia. Hungary is in the house. Anika, what's going on? Brazil. India. How is everyone today? All right, good, good. Um, I saw a couple questions earlier from some people. Yeah. So Sunshine's question. Mirza is here. I wanna. Poland. What is going on? What's going on, everyone? So the way this works, I think most people have been here already, but the way this works is that you can just, Daniel, what's going on, man? It's been a little while. It's been a little while. What you can do is just simply add the questions right to the chat and then I will answer them. Oh, the beard. Yeah, the beard disappeared. I was busy this week. I shaved. Naima's here. Mary, what's going on? What is going on? Um, Amina had a question really early on and I can answer her question if I remember what it was. And bad connection. Uh oh, with me? Sam the Taiwanese is here. What is going on? Yeah, Daniel, I figured that you're working hard. A lot. It's, it's gotten busy for a lot of people. And even though I'm still on summer vacation, some busy stuff going on. Oh, Daniel has vacation coming up, which is nice. All right. I think Sunshine had a question get situated here trying something new trying something new um sunshine had a question and her question was what's a i don't know i need to get to the questions what's a patio what's a back deck um i wish that i had one to show you i have one in my backyard and i used to do live streams from there but a back deck or a patio is often raised off the ground a little bit and you will often put some tables and some chairs if people want to enjoy the outside so that's what a patio and a deck are and they're basically the same thing and of course once i go live that is my neighbor's cue to start mowing the lawn i listened to one of the live streams a couple days ago and I heard a lawnmower in the background. I heard the birds in the background. So, but I don't think it upset the audio. So, Rod is here. Rod, I think, has done more work for the channel this week than I have. I have been very busy, but Rod has been busy doing some subtitles for Brazilian Portuguese in many videos. And uh, Eugene put a couple Russian subtitles up. Aroni, Aroni and I and Jesus and Jamie had a video chat last night. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a member, there is a link down there somewhere to join. But we try to do video chats a couple times a month for members. Sam the Taiwanese has a political question. I will get right to that. And then my neighbor's child just slammed a car door. Did you hear that? Uh, thank you. Sunshine says that the noise is, every noise is nice. Yeah, I agree. I have a neighbor that's fixing something. I can hear him or her hammering in the distance. All right, so the way this works is if you're new here, just simply ask the questions in the chat. I will answer them as best I can. If I happen to miss your question, 
Please ask again. Hope the sound is all right. Just simply ask the questions in the chat. Not bad, not bad. Um, Sam is wondering, Teacher Brent, do you think Trump will win the election? Wow, this is such a hard question. This is such a hard question because I think COVID is a big problem. Uh, many, or all, both, we only have two now. Both presidential candidates are unable to hold rallies. They haven't had any debates. Debates are when the two candidates get together, have questions, talk about why they are the best candidate for the position. So I think it's going to be really, really close. There are a lot of people who like Trump. There are a lot of people who like Biden. Last election, 2016, <coughs> excuse me, 2016, everyone thought Hillary Clinton was gonna win. And we know how that turned out. So impossible to say, oh, Yes, Daniel, I forgot. We now have three presidential candidates. Kanye West has declared himself a presidential candidate. We'll see how that goes. Sylvia is here, welcome. Ibrahim, welcome. Had a couple nice exchanges with Ibrahim this week. We have also chatted on video. We um, both like a guy named Steve Kaufman. He's one of my favorites. Well, yes, uh, a lot of people say that Kanye West is actually taking votes away from, from Biden. It's true, that's true. Vladimir, how are you? Vladimir says, hi, Mr. Brent. My congratulations with Independence Day. Could you say to us what we think about the Icon Company, which built the house on a third printer? I'm not sure, I'm not sure, buddy. I'm not sure what that means. Could you talk about the Icon Company, which built the house on a third printer? I don't know, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Rod has a great question here. What is the difference between rent and sublet? Oh, I think I know. All right, for a second I was like, I don't know. I think they're both the same. But actually, actually, renting means that you are paying what we call a landlord. We're calling a landlord, okay? You would pay a landlord, and that is a person who owns the apartment. Let's say you're renting. But if you sublet, and notice that sub, right, which means under, like submarine or subpar, meaning not, not great. Subpar means not as good. So if you are subletting, that means someone else has rented the apartment from the landlord but they had to move. So now you pay the person who originally had the lease. This is a little complicated. And a lease is what you take out when you rent an apartment. So if you're subletting, often it's a friend. Maybe the friend has had to move, but you need a place to stay and they have a contract. Maybe they signed a contract for paying rent for six months. Subletting means you pay your friend to stay there. That's very complicated. I don't think I'm explaining that in simple English very well. Subletting. You're paying your friend who was staying there before, but they're paying the landlord. It involves three people. I hope, I hope that works. I hope that helps. Probably didn't, right? Probably didn't. Daniel is wondering, how was my 4th of July? It was actually pretty good. The weather was supposed to be not good. It was supposed to be pretty rainy. Um, and it ended up not raining. And I went up to my brother's house. He has a pool. 
we hung out there for a little while and then we went to my friend's house who lives outside of the city and um, we let off some fireworks and I put pictures of that up on the Facebook page and uh, the Instagram page for this channel. So Daniel seems like he is a fan of Kanye. So you are voting for Kanye. Oh, I wanna says that explanation is clear. Phew, because I am a native English speaker and I was confusing myself. So, but thank you, I wanna. Thank you, I wanna. Um, next question. Mochin, welcome my friend, welcome. Yes, Bob the Canadian's chat, I was in there earlier. Always love hanging out in Bob the Canadian's chat. And even though I'm a native English speaker, I get to talk with a lot of you who are also in Bob the Canadian's chat and I learn a little bit about Canada. And on my 4th of July, I was with 13 people. Four of them were Canadians. I live very close to the Canadian border and some people in my family actually are Canadian. So I, I have a true love for Canada. Love Canada. But Motion is asking, or maybe it's just a statement. I haven't read it. Hi, Mr. Brent. I'm fresh here. This is my first time in your channel. Welcome. I just came from Bob the Canadian's channel, hoping to learn more English and more fun. I hope so too. I hope that when you come here, the beginning of the hour, when you leave at the end of the hour, your English is a little bit better. Is a little bit better. Uh, it looks like Mary is here. And it looks like Cecilia's here. Cecilia's here. Um, I just saw Sam the Taiwanese. He asked, how much is a house in my neighborhood? There was a house that I showed in a video I made not too long ago. And I made a video for members too with a little bit more information, but I think it's way overpriced. A house in my neighborhood just sold and it sold for $320,000, which is, which is quite expensive. But, um, I would say the average house in my neighborhood, maybe 210,000 to 250,000 where I live and you can buy a, you know, there's another city in Maine called Portland, which is a bigger city. The houses there are much more expensive, but if you move out to the country in Maine, the houses are much less expensive. Uh, Naima is wondering, does the word have a bad connotation? I'm not sure which word. If it is sublet, I'm just guessing, if it's sublet, uh, sublet does not have a bad connotation. So I hope that was, I hope that's the word you're talking about. Oh, and I'm looking at my chat. I spelled landlord wrong. Landlord. Landlord. That is who you rent from. Landlord. And you, when you rent from this landlord, they are supposed to fix things that go wrong. They are supposed to, sometimes they will even pay for your heat in the winter. Just depends on the agreement. Ah, uh, Ibrahim is wondering, do I teach English to American students or do I teach English? We might call it ELL, English language learners. So the majority of my students. So most of my students are native born American English speakers, the majority. Sometimes in class I have had students who were born in South Sudan, Cambodia, Somalia, but I would say 95% are native native born students. 
All right, Rod said that he got it for the sublet versus rent. I think I could have done better, but I'm glad it helped. Michelle is here. Um, whoa. This is a question, hey, Brent. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Michelle. What do you use more frequently? Steve Dory or Mover? Well, I don't know what Steve Dory is or Steve Dory, so I would say Mover. We use that more often. And because I just spoke about um, houses, how much they cost, you could say a Mover is someone that you pay to move your stuff. So mover might be the verb, but it could also be the noun, like a person who comes with a big van or a big truck, puts all of your furniture in it and moves it for you. So just because it's heavy lifting a couch, it's heavy lifting a bed. So some people pay movers to help them move. Um, Naima, are these two expressions interchangeable? Out of the blue and off the cuff. Um, for the most part, off the cuff though, it usually talks about speech. So what I'm doing right now, I'm answering these questions off the cuff. I don't have any notes. Um, sometimes if people are giving a speech, they don't have notes. They're not looking at a teleprompter, which a lot of politicians have. It's a screen that reads their speech for them so they can read it and speak. That would not be off the cuff. Out of the blue is sometimes thoughts come into your head. They just, oh, oh out of the blue, I thought about my friend from high school, just out of the blue. So almost interchangeable. If you, d speaking of moving vans, no, this is not a moving van. This is a FedEx truck. FedEx truck is coming by, not DHL. Ah, they went right on by. I'm expecting some, sorry to shake the can. I'm expecting some lights, lights so I can film. And all of you who are members, thank you. You helped pay for that. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question, and of course the chat jumps, the chat jumps. Beginner is here. Welcome, Mary, Cecilia, Nathalie. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Miss Rutan, welcome, welcome. There are um, maybe a few people in that are new to this chat. Welcome. Bob the Canadian gave me a nice shout out on his channel yesterday. It is called Bob's Short Lessons. Check that channel out. Every day he gives, well, four days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I think he takes Wednesday off. He gives a short lesson, like a mini lesson, like what I do. And um, his channel is very helpful, very helpful. All right, um, typical FedEx truck. Yeah, typical American FedEx truck. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, motion, can you please pronounce the difference between motor, no, 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 forget that. Mortar and murder, mortar and murder, mortar and murder. So murder, most people know what that is, right? <coughs> Not a very nice thing to do, unfortunately. Bad, bad people, murder. And then a mortar is often used in war. It's like a big bullet type thing, a bomb, a mortar that flies off into the air and causes murder oftentimes. So murder and mortar. Murder and mortar. All right, Ibrahim is wondering, what if you have foreign language students in my classroom and they know zero English 
and I don't know their native language. Well, because Ibrahim and I are big fans of Steve Kaufman, and Steve Kaufman is a big believer in input. To learn a foreign language, input. Lots of listening, like you're doing right now. Nice job. Lots of reading. So when you're very new to a language, of course, it's difficult to read. But the input, the idea is that the input will help these students, because they are so young, that they will be exposed to a lot of English and learn. However, we do have a very small classroom of students. It's an ELL class. So they will most likely go there first before they come to my classroom. If they are in my classroom, they know a pretty good amount of English. But if they are in my class, I will teach them through English input. Lots and lots of listening to me speak, lots of videos on YouTube. Um, I wanna, from Poland, what other languages do I know? Unfortunately, I know one language, and that is, and that is English. But for the last 15 months, I have been trying, trying, trying to learn Italian, trying to learn Italian. Ho studiato italiano per quasi 15 mesi. I think, I think that I just said something in Italian. Um, Sunshine, Armenia, did a little research on Armenia this week. Beautiful country, beautiful country. Lots of mountains, beautiful landscape. Um, she's wondering what are the second languages that are taught in most American schools? We have three main languages that are taught around the country. That would be French, that would be Spanish, and then Latin. So those are the three main languages. Ah, grazie mille, Aroni. Um, so that's basically it. But if you go to larger cities, um, Arabic is often taught. Chinese, uh, Mandarin, I believe, Chinese is often taught. Spanish is by far the most taught. So if a school is too small and only has enough money to pay one foreign language teacher, most likely it will be Spanish. At my school, it's a middle school, so my students are 13 and 14. We offer, we cha it changed. For the last 10, 20 years, Spanish and French has been offered. To be honest, this year, French was cut. So my students now only receive Spanish instruction. It will change when they go to the high school. They will receive a choice of French Spanish or Latin. All right, more questions. The chat seems a little busier today. I am going to do my best to get to your question. Please be patient. All right, Gleb. Gleb is here. Ah, Gleb, it's a great, great point. So, oh, Rafael is here. Welcome. We is here. Welcome. Sharef is here. I haven't said hi to you, Sharef. Hello. How are you? All right. So we talk about shout outs often. Yes. And a shout out. And in the coming, uh, hopefully Saturday, it will be released. But uh, Sean at Free 99 English, Bob the Canadian and myself, we're, we're going to do a crossover. Here's another a crossover where three English teachers will talk about the same topic. But a shout out is on my channel, I say, hey, Bob the Canadian has a great channel for short lessons. You should, yeah, Erroni, he was in the video chat last night. If you wanna, if you wanna talk a little bit about that, we, we spoke last night about it. Um, 
we will just mention each other's channels because I really like what Bob the Canadian does. I put out one or two videos a week, a few, a few less now, but you might get some benefit from his channel. And I think a lot of people want as much English as they can find. So I like to send people over to his channel and he is nice enough to send people over to mine. Because he, he is, he's been doing this much longer than I have. Somebody is mowing the lawn, Cecilia, yes. And now they're weed whacking. They're weed whacking. And that's an even, it's a smaller motor, but it's louder. We call it weed whacking. You know, I even think a couple people are weed whacking. Weed whacking. Weed whacking. We spell whacking. Weed. I think that's how we spell it. Weed whacking. Weed whacking. K Mega is wondering how is it going in India? Uh, what are some other subjects that your students are taught in school? So we have this thing called the four core subjects. Four core subjects. And this will last middle school, high school, even college. And um, they are science, they are social studies, which is um, history, government. So science, social studies, math, and English. So what I teach English, it is a major subject. It's a four, one of the four core subjects. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh no, we woke up too late and was not in Bob the Canadian's chat. It's always a better chat when we is in the chat, that's for sure. All right, Raphael. This is a great question. We often say this when we talk about time, okay? So if you have something coming up, let's say it's a big test, in English, on Friday, I, I like to use this example often. Let's say you have a big test on Friday. It's coming up. It's in front of you. You can say, I have a big test in front of me next week. I need to do well. And once you take that test, you might say, whoa, I'm glad that's behind me now. I did well. I'm glad that's behind me. So... Um, we often talk about that with time. If it's in front of you, it hasn't happened yet. If it's behind you, it has already happened. All right, I'm sorry if I'm missing your questions. Pashwa, welcome. Uh, figure out. Figure out. That means figure out. means to understand. So hopefully you can figure out what I'm saying. I know it's not easy for everyone. I know that a lot of the times the words that I use, you will not know. But I think the more you listen, the more you will figure it out. The more you will figure it out. Yes, sunshine, to solve. It's another way to say figure out. So maybe you have a difficult math problem. That will take you some time, but hopefully eventually, eventually with time, you can figure it out. Sharef is telling we that Bob's lesson was about restaurants. I uh, loved that, rest, uh, that lesson. I like that lesson a lot. We got into a little bit about tipping too, which can be tipping which can be a little difficult because some restaurants, some countries say you should tip, some they say you should not. Pashua, I'm happy to help, happy to help. Mm. Ah, and Mega said it's, it's about the same in India for schooling. Very nice to know. Yeah, Ibrahim says to Rod, yeah, it's, it's super tough. 
<coughs> excuse me, sorry. Uh, learning any foreign language is super difficult. I know it when learning Italian, it's hard. It's hard. And I know many of you have been at English for many years. And it's one thing to, oh, I can hear this guy. My name is Brent, by the way, if you're new here. I can hear Brent speak. I understand him. But when I go to speak myself, it all goes away, right? All of the words you want to say, they're gone. It will come. The more you speak, the better it will become. And there are some people, there's a Facebook page for this group. Some people are in there. Some people have become language partners to practice their English. Gleb says it is busy in here. It is, it is busy. Welcome everyone. Oh, no way. Rafael is talking about Matt versus Japan. Ibrahim. I like that guy too, Matt versus Japan. He is a big inspiration. Many of you are inspirations because I'm also trying to learn a foreign language and I see how hard you work, which means I need to work hard. Yes, and Sunshine is in the, the Facebook group too, but she might have a different name. She might have a different name. I know her name in the Facebook group, but I will not say. Susanta is here. Vladimir has a good question. Is there a difference between rare and seldom? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes they are the exact same. Though, you might say, I rarely go out to eat. I seldom go out to eat. But sometimes we can talk about um, an object as being rare. Maybe there is a coin, a little coin. Maybe it's old and rare. Not a lot of people have it. So you can't use seldom for that. Rare can sometimes be an adjective when seldom cannot be that same adjective. I hope that helps. So, but seldom and rare, when you're talking about frequency, how often something happens, it's the same. You can say that. You could say that I rarely have to work on the weekends. I seldom have to work on the weekends. So same thing, you just need uh, rarely, you just need a helping verb with the rarely. I rarely have to work on the weekends. I seldom work on the weekends. So a little difference there, but can be used the same. Um, ah, interesting. Alvi, welcome. Japan, it is very late in Japan. Welcome, welcome. It is rude to give tips to a waitress. Or we also use this term, a server. A server, and that takes the gender out of the occupation. So it's not male or female like waiter or a waitress is. Those terms are still used in the United States, but sometimes you will now hear server. So. Yeah, Aron, Aron has some great tips for me. It's true, it's true. I want to build up my vocabulary a little bit more, but. Uh, we is wondering, <clears throat> playing overhead, you might be able to hear that. What's the difference between might and possible? I need to make a video on might. I have made a couple videos on could, would, and should. I have another one coming up with supposed to and could and would and should, supposed to. But uh, might and possible also can be used interchangeably. You could say, it might rain today. Another one of my favorite examples. It might rain today. It's possible that it will rain today. I might get a raise at work. It's possible I could get a raise at work. It's possible that I fail. No, no, let's not say fail. It's possible that I will crush my English exam, meaning I'm going to do very well. It's possible I'm going to crush my English exam. Uh, 
All right. Um, Rod, I'm sorry. I think I saw this question a couple times. Um, and Rod is offering his two cents. He's also a, an English teacher in Brazil, so he knows what he's talking about. Rod says, Brent, I'm wondering uh, which moniker is used to replace name. Or is it not? Oh, if moniker is used. Um, not, not so much. But a moniker is, well, I, I would think we would use nickname more often. They're just about the same. Moniker and nickname. So I, I would think that nickname is used more often. Used more often. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel is wondering, it is difficult for foreigners to study ESL. Cheap places to go. I... I try to study Italian as cheaply as possible. And I, to be honest, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of YouTube videos. I do pay about $10 a month for something called Link. Um, how do you spell Link? How do you spell Link, Ibrahim? Um, so, and I have bought a few books in Italian, but I think just listening to People on YouTube, like this channel, speaking fairly slowly, doing lessons on YouTube, just listening, listening, getting that input, using subtitles if possible. For many of my videos, subtitles accurate, subtitles are available. And also, accurate Brazilian Portuguese subtitles are available, available thanks to Rod. Mm. You're welcome, Rod. You're welcome. Yeah, and Aroni is saying, excuse me, the transcripts are um, very important. I think reading as you're watching is important. And you can also slow down my voice. Not now, of course, but you can um, make it a little bit more slow if you'd like or a little bit quicker if you'd like. All right. Gleb. Oh, he's, um, let's see, Gleb, what are you saying here? Thank you for your answer. Shout out, of course. Native speakers often say for sure at the end of the sentence. For example, okay, what does that mean, for sure? That is just, that is just to provide emphasis. You can always leave off for sure at the end, but if you really want to prove your point or make your statement really clear you can say like oh man the office i like that show for sure for sure so it's just a little tag at the end to em emphasize to add importance to what you want to say for sure for sure i agree with you for sure so just a little bit of uh something you can use if you want you don't have to but native speakers do often. All right, Motion, why don't you make another channel where you teach people only descriptive words? You know what? Right, well, Bob the Canadian has been around forever. He's a legend. And so I'm still trying to grow this channel. I'm still trying to figure out what you want as a viewer, you know, what will do well what will help the most people. So no new channels for me yet, you know. Three years from now, let's see, maybe, maybe. Oh my gosh, Sunshine is asking me how to manage time correctly. All right, well, what has helped me, and I know it's hard for some people, but what has helped me is I do not watch many television shows anymore. I don't get sucked into, sucked into binge watching. I don't watch shows anymore. And that has given me a lot of extra time. Um, so uh, Stranger Things, 
Not sure how many people like that show on Netflix. Very popular in the US. I was addicted to seasons one and two. But then I started learning Italian and I started, I don't think the YouTube channel had started yet, but I had been learning that and I thought, man, every hour that I spend watching Stranger Things is one hour less I have to study my Italian. So I didn't watch season three. It was hard, but I've stopped watching as much TV as I used to. I hope that helps. Um, what's the difference between resting and relaxing? It's Vladimir, right? Vladimir. Um, sometimes there is no difference. Sometimes there is no difference. Resting. But resting doesn't always mean relaxing. So maybe you had been running for two miles. We use miles in the United States. Maybe you had been running for three kilometers and you're really tired, you might take a rest, but you're probably not relaxing. A lot of times when we say relaxing, you kick your feet up, you lay back in the chair, maybe you're watching some TV, maybe you're reading a good book, but when you're relaxing, that means you don't have anything stressful in your life. You're trying to forget about anything that's stressful, all right? Uh, Daniel, funny guy. Um, Alvi, okay, did I watch The Tiger King? Okay, you know how I said that I have stopped watching TV as much? Well, my daughter said, Dad, The Tiger King, you should watch this. And we watched it as a family. My children are older. They are 13 and 14. Yes, I stopped studying Italian to watch, binge watch Tiger King. Guilty, guilty. I had to, I had to see, did Carol Baskin really kill her husband? Yes, she did, right? She probably did. She probably, she fed him to the tigers, right? So trash. So that would definitely be a way that I relaxed during COVID. It was a way that I forgot how I couldn't go out and I just stayed and watched Tiger King. Yeah, right. Sometimes you have to. Yeah, Rod says when he's not teaching, he is honing in. Did you say uh, honing, honing? my English in some way, that is true. That is true. Honing, narrowing it down, becoming better. Mary, I haven't seen the wall, but yeah, sometimes, I know Mary works hard as well. Sometimes you just gotta, just gotta relax. Your brain needs to relax. Your brain needs to relax. All right, let's look for some more. Oh, Mirza, you're from India as well? I believe it's really late in India, isn't it? Thank you for staying up and thank you for staying up. Yeah, um, Mega and I have often spoke and when it's dawn or sunrise here for me, it's often sunset for her, I believe in India. Any more questions? Oh, Sunshine prefers the American accent to the Canadian. Uh oh, don't do Don't tell Bob the Canadian that or Sean from Free 999 English. Um, but I like the American. I, I'm I'm biased. I'm biased. I also like the American accent. And <clears throat> excuse me, can we all agree way better than the British accent, right? I'm kidding. I actually I do like I like the Canadian accent. I do like the British accent too. I do, but the American accent is the best, of course. Of course. Uh, oh, Sam the Taiwanese is wondering, do I like Tesla? Do I tend to buy them? I don't actually. I think um, Teslas are pretty expensive. I think they're great for the environment, but they're a little bit too expensive for me right now. If I could afford it, 
I would definitely buy a Tesla. Better for the environment. It's a win-win situation. Win-win. So, you still get a car. That's a win. It helps the environment. That's a win. It's a win-win situation. Unfortunately, I am, I'm not poor, but I'm too poor to afford a Tesla, to afford a Tesla. And there, <laughs> Cecilia is saying that she prefers my typical American beard. Well, I kind of do too, but it was getting itchy and hot. So, but I will, I will grow it back one day. I'll grow it back one day, just for you, just for you. Right, that's uh, Aroni is saying that I hate the British accent. Not true. Oh, beginner uh, is saying that the British accent is arrogant. You know, I can see that a little bit where they, I think Americans, and I'm stereotyping here because of course not everyone is. But, and you know, you have to be careful when you're stereotyping. Because I'm saying that all Americans are this way, all British are this way, no, no, no. But I think Americans tend to be more down to earth than the British, they, not everyone. And then Canadians, they're just like the nicest people on the planet. They are even more down to earth, I think. I love going to Canada. Oh no. I, should I uh, copy and paste it? It might be the, oh, sunshine. Sunshine, uh oh. Yeah, don't tell, don't tell Bob. Don't tell Bob the Canadian. Uh, I do like. Ah, Mary, we can agree on this. She says that learning English is like, listening to a German song, probably a German, like heavy metal, death metal song, right? Where it's just jumble, it's just jumble. And, and unless of course you're German, then you might understand it very well, but I'm not German and neither is Mary. So yeah, I, it just sounds like noise. Just sounds, uh oh, so, Adriana, welcome. Thank you for becoming a member, by the way. Thank you. That happened a couple days ago. Thank you for becoming a member. If you would like to become a member, there's a join button down there. And sometimes we get together for video chats. Video chat. Oh, but she's Polish. Okay, but you're in Germany right now. So, do you speak German and Polish and English? That's impressive. Trilingual. We would say try as three trilingual. Many of you in here are bilingual. You speak both English and your native language. I have visited Germany once. I liked it a lot. <clears throat> ah, so Adriana and Luke, two members from Poland, two members from Hungary as well. Welcome, Hungary. Hungary and Poland are in the house. And so is Germany, kind of too. Um, we had a question that I wanted to, oh, we says sometimes I don't understand British English. And to be honest, as a native English speaker, sometimes certain accents in England give me a hard time. But who was it that posted in the Facebook chat a Scottish Scottish accent. Who was that? Was it Mary? Was it Ibrahim? Um, and to be honest, the Scottish accent is really difficult for a lot of native English speakers in the United States. The Scottish accent is tough. We really have to hone in on what they're saying. And it helps if they um, speak soft, uh, speak slowly speak slow, it really helps. And I'm not sure if that's the same for them, if when an American speaks quickly, if Scots have a hard time. Scots, great Scot. 
That's from The Office. Great Scott, Great Scott production. Great Scott. Office fans might know. Um, I don't know, Sunshine. I don't know how Armenia works. There are some countries that don't allow you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, all of the English lessons, though, are free. Members, there are no English lessons on the member channel. It's just sometimes behind the scenes stuff, sometimes video chats, sometimes you'll get the video a day early. Sometimes you get to pick the ice cream flavors that I will be trying in next week's video. I wanna do four ice cream flavors and we are down. I, I have three that I've picked out from comments from members, but I, I need another one and so maybe I'll put a poll up on the community page Oh, Sunshine, I'm sorry. You posted the Scottish one. Yes, but her name is different in the Facebook page. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the Scottish accent is tough. <laughs> Mary says it's like they are offending the Brits. Could be. Could be. All right, Mirza is wondering if I know, and I don't. I don't. Sir, do you know... Sidu Moza Walla. No, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Please tell us in the chat. Um, Aniko is saying, yeah, there are so many flavors. There is. I'm doing next week. Uh, I will start filming this week, and I hope to have it out by Saturday. But an English teacher tries ice cream flavors. And in that video, yes, I will be trying ice cream from Ben and Jerry's. They have crazy flavors, a lot of descriptive words that it was mentioned earlier, descriptive words. Very important to be able to express yourself in English. So I'm going to be trying those ice cream flavors. I'm going to take you to the store with me. I'm going to mask up. And we're going to be trying some crazy American uh, ice cream flavors. They are out of Vermont, not far from where I live. And uh, yeah. And um, Sean from Free 99 English will be doing the same thing in Canada. And Bob the Canadian will also be doing something similar with ice cream. But it's a secret right now. It's a secret. It's a secret. My sister-in-law is walking. I won't put her on camera and her friend. And they are Canadian. They're Canadian. We were talking about Canadians just a while ago. All good things. All good things. So, yeah, we have a lot of love for Canada in the chat. <clears throat> uh, Rod says it's going to be torturous. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I could share ice cream with everyone. It is a bit difficult to ship ice cream, though. It's possible, but very expensive. Ah, so Mirza is saying a very famous singer from India. Interesting. And of course, in India, with over a billion people, people can become quite famous in India and just be known in India. Well, I was looking at the, um, I don't even know, the YouTuber or the YouTube channel with the most subscriptions is from India. I forgot, it's a music channel, I think. All right. Um, Adriana says, yes, Polish is my native language. I can communicate in German, but I'm still learning. Quite a difficult language to learn. Oh, but very logical. Oh, very nice. And Polish being a Slavic language, German being a Germanic language, um, <clears throat> both languages are quite difficult for native English speakers, German and Polish. In fact, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, are easier to learn on average for English speakers. Um, Alvi is wondering, do I like sporting events? Yes, my two favorite sports are football, but I should write, it's American football. I like American football and hockey. Those are my two favorites, American football and hockey. 
Yeah, that's it, Mirza. That's it. Are there T-Rise? T-Rise? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Couple more questions here. Yeah, man, Ibrahim and I have a lot of the same watching and listening. Yeah, I forgot his name. He does Coffee Break Italian, Coffee Break a lot. Coffee Break French, Italian, and Spanish are the three major ones, but he's done, I think, small episodes of Russian. But yeah, he is Scottish, and um, he speaks pretty clearly. I was listening to another podcast, Ibrahim, you might like it. It's called um, the Actual Fluency Podcast. I'll write down. Um, and the guy who hosts it is Danish, but um, he was interviewing someone who taught English in Russia for a long time, and he said that his Scottish accent got in the way of him getting some teaching jobs. Even though he was a native English speaker, in some countries, he was unable to get a job teaching because of his accent. All right, Alvi. Okay, I might have already... Oh, understand the Scouser's accent? I've never heard it. I've never heard that. Alvi was asking about British English. The Scouser, no. I don't. Um, but I have heard of Cockney Rhyme Scheme. Uh, the Cockney accent. And that is impossible. Impossible to understand what they are saying. Yeah, Ibrahim, you're welcome. A uh, beginner is wondering, what is my favorite movie? That's easy. Easy. Toy Story. Toy Story. 100%. No question. Toy Story. I also like The Godfather. I also like Back to the Future. But that's how old I am. That, that's my jam right there. That's my jam. You can say that when, like, that's your genre of movies. That's where... You feel most comfortable? It's my jam. Toy Story, Back to the Future, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, the Liverpool accent. Oh, the Beatles. The Beatles are one of my favorite um, music groups. And they have a, a British accent. And it sounds like everything they say is a question, right? Even when it's not a question. Yeah, I used to be able to do a Beatles accent. Probably not very well, but... All right. Yo, Daniel says, yo, Brent, before you go, let me know where and what kind of materials you would recommend me to take my vocabulary. Oh, a little bit more formal. Oh, Daniel, I'm wondering why, why do you want to have a little bit more formal vocabulary? Um, where could you do that? Um, I don't watch it too much. British. British is definitely a lot more formal. But um, Downton Abbey, that was very popular in the United States. I didn't watch it. But that television show is, I think um, we could call it Upper Crust, too. Excuse me. That's another way to say, like, very formal Upper Crust of society, where they drink their, their tea with their pinky out. So you might want to what might want to watch that show Downton I think it's I don't know how to spell it Downton Abby definitely British Sam the Taiwanese is laughing at something Adriana says you are not old oh are you talking about me oh thank you thank you I compared to some I am though old yeah sunshine says the Irish accent I agree 100% well, and maybe we could throw in the Welch accent too, right? Welch. You got Wales, the Welch, the Scottish, and the Irish accent. Top of the morning to you. 
top of the morning. And I do believe they have some other slang. Um, Australian and New Zealand seems a little bit easier. And of course, American and Canadian, no problem there. No problem there. Yeah, I, Rod is talking about Cockney Rhyme. I studied it for a little bit. There was um, a movie, <coughs> uh, because I'm so old, <clears throat> there was a movie made back in the early 90s, I think, called Snatch. I think it's called Snatch. And it's British. Yeah, I think it's Snatch. I think. And Brad Pitt is in it. And he talks mostly in Cockney Rhyme Scheme. So I did a little research on it back then. Fascinating, but I, I don't know how to do it. Um, Alvy is wondering, have I read the book The Godfather by Mario Puzo? I have read The Godfather, the book. And that is one of the books that, or I should say, it's one of the movies that follow the book very closely. The book is great. It gives a little bit of insight into the movie, a few more extra scenes. But yeah, very good book. And I believe that Mario Puzo, the author of the book, was on the movie set as it was being filmed. And he was kind of guiding Francis Ford Coppola, who is the director of The Godfather. And they were making sure that it stayed pretty close to how the book was written. Mm. All right. Some more. Rod. Is it Snatch? I think it's Snatch. I'm not sure. Yes, Guy Ritchie. Uh, Rod probably knows about Guy Ritchie very well. Madonna's former husband, right? I believe. I believe. Sandeep is here. Welcome. It's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. A um, couple more questions here. I keep reading Adriana's comment that I'm not old. I do appreciate that. I'm going to copy and paste that. Remind myself I'm not old. You know, some days when I wake up, though, I feel old. I feel old. Oh, losing the hair. See, the beard was helpful because I can't grow hair up here much, but I can grow it here. So I think it made it look like I had more hair. And... It covered up this face, which was good, too. Naima is here. Uh, to bet and to gamble. She is wondering, is that the same? Yes. To bet and to gamble. And I used gamble in the video I made about the trash. And so I said that I gambled by not putting the trash out earlier. Um, but you could say I made a bet. And gambling and betting are often when you take a chance. Something could go really wrong or something could go really right. It's usually not safe to gamble. Usually, there is a risk when you gamble. And Sunshine, I see that question. It's a great question. Uh, because when we say I bet... It often doesn't really mean actually betting. Um, so when you take a risk or you gamble, you could do it with money. It's actually legal in some places in the United States. So you might risk, um, I don't let's say a dollar. You might risk a dollar to make $100, something like that. But the chances are, you are going to lose that dollar, which is why I don't gamble. I just keep my money. I don't make as much money as I could, but I definitely don't lose any money. So, but some people like gambling. Oh, Ibrahim, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Boosting my ego, boosting my ego. All right, um, but I uh, like that question, K-Mega. Tan, welcome. Uh, Sunshine was wondering, I bet. What does that mean? I bet. So basically when we say I bet, 
we often just say, I think that often means, I think, I think like in some way it is related to betting, but I think if you think of it, I think if you think of it as meaning, I think it probably be like, um, I bet you woke up late this morning, right? We, I bet you woke up wait, late this morning. So often it's just, I think, I bet. You could say in the future though, oh, I bet it'll rain tomorrow. So, but it's like, I think it will rain tomorrow. Mostly, I think. Um, I hope that helps, sunshine. That we say that in English all the time. I bet, I bet you didn't eat lunch today. I bet, you could say it about anything. I bet, I bet. Um, Mega is wondering, do we have many eagles where I live? Not really. There are some, and I have seen some, but every time I see it, my mouth drops open because I can't believe I have seen an eagle. They are protected in this country. They're endangered. Their numbers, the amount of eagles in this country are going down. They're trying to be saved. I think it's working, but you cannot shoot an eagle. You cannot kill an eagle in this country. If you do, you could face imprisonment and definitely a big fine. Have to pay a lot of money for that. Have to pay a lot of money for that. All right, a couple more questions and then I need to get going. Thank you, Ibrahim, boosting my confidence. Thank you. Sandeep is wondering if I have ever had long hair before. Yeah, when I was a teenager, because I'm so old, when I was a teenager, bands like Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, um, those bands had long hair and I was into music. Still am. I like music. So I tried to be like them. I grew not not really long, but like maybe, maybe here. Maybe there, back when I had, look at that, Daniel. Look at that, I'm gonna copy and paste that. It's better have a dollar in the pocket than a hundred in the game. That is for sure, that is for sure. Um, when you, Sunshine is asking about kudos, I'm talking a little bit more quickly to try to get all the questions in. Um, when you talk about kudos, it's basically like you're saying congratulations. Or maybe even a shout out, like, oh man, kudos. It's telling someone, nice job, nice job. I don't know what, I don't know really what kudos are. I just know what it means. And you can hear one of my neighbors is sawing now, sawing. All right, a uh, couple more questions. Offspring, Virschloff. We, I was in a band back in high school. I played the drums. You may have seen them in some of my videos. Different drums back then. Um, and we did play, we played two songs by The Offspring. What are we playing? What are we playing? Uh, Keep Them Separated. We played that song. We played another one. Can't remember. I can't remember which one. Alvi, thank you. Yeah, beginner. Uh, beginner, do we still use the adjective hideous? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. There was a famous commercial, State Farm. State Farm commercial. Jake from State Farm. All right. This may be the last question we get to. I like this. So, <laughs> this commercial for an insurance company. Take a drink. My last little bit of water. Jake from State Farm. Jake, you should Google this after. But there is a husband and a wife. It's really late at night. The husband is on the phone to somebody and the wife comes downstairs and she thinks she catches her husband cheating on her with another woman on the phone. So the man is really just calling about insurance. Oh, it's late at night. I'm not sure why he's calling for insurance, but he is. And so, the wife comes up to the husband and said, oh, 
who are you talking to? And he says, um, Jake from State Farm. And that's, that's the name of the insurance company, Jake from State Farm. And she said, oh, let me talk to Jake from State Farm. And she takes the phone. She says, so hi, Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing? And then you see him, he's like, um, khakis? And she says to her husband, well, Jake from State Farm, she sounds hideous. And he says, well, he, he's a guy. Oh, great commercial, but hideous. Every time I hear hideous, I think of Jake from State Farm. And maybe we, because we lives in the United States. It was a big commercial a couple, a couple years ago. And I think they're making new Jake from State Farm commercials. Yeah, you should definitely check Jake from State Farm. Let me see if I can find a link. Ah, just Google it. My boomer, it's, it's too hard for me, um, I think, to copy and paste. Oh, thank you, Cecilia. Jake from State Farm. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy. That's, yeah. So, um, obviously, the wife was upset that he was talking to another woman. But he was really just talking to Jake from State Farm at midnight. I'm not sure why. All right, um, we is wondering, do I drink iced coffee? That's an easy question. I don't drink um, iced coffee. I don't drink any coffee um, because it just, it gives me a headache. It does the opposite of what caffeine should do. It makes me feel sleepy when I have coffee. I don't know why. All right, it has been, oh, an hour and 10 minutes, but this is always so fun. I love getting together with you guys. Tomorrow we will do it um, before Bob the Canadian's chat. We'll do it at about 10 o'clock. I'll put out the link. I'm making a, a video today and should release it tomorrow. Six other ways to say shut up. Not very nice. Peace out, Daniel. Not very nice, but it came up in the chat a couple weeks ago or maybe last week. And I was asked two days in a row, is there another way to tell someone to shut up? I think they asked for a nice way. And to be honest in the video, I don't have a nice way. Well, I have one nice way, I think. Maybe two. But most of them are rather rude. But shut up is not nice to say to anybody. But sometimes people just keep talking. So I'm going to talk about this sign for someone talking. Blabber mouths. I'm going to talk about that. Motor mouths. So I hope you enjoy it. Jesus gave me a couple other ones last night. And Aroni. He was in the chat too. So Naima is throwing the flowers out. She's giving the flowers. That means it is time to go. Thank you so much, Cecilia. I had fun too. Hope everyone had fun. Sunshine, thank you. Motion, thank you. Says it was a great lesson. I hope it was. K Mega, you guys are great. Thank you. Aroni is still here. Welcome. Thank you so much, Gleb. Thank you. Adios, amigos. Adriana, nice to see you in the chat today. Sam, the Taiwanese. Nathalie, I hope I'm saying that. Miss Rutten. Can I say Miss Rutten instead? But thank you guys. Virschloff, Mr. Brewer. Mr. Brewer. Thank you guys so much. We thank you so much. We are out of here until tomorrow. Aniko, Ibrahim. So many cool people in here. Ciao. Ciao, amigo. Adios. Adios. Beginner. Thank you guys so much. We will see you guys tomorrow. Oh my gosh. K-Mega. Go to sleep in India. Thanks for joining.